Welcome to Joe's Astrology. This is the birth chart for Olivia Munn, and she is a sun in Cancer. Gemini rising and a moon in Pisces in the 10th house. And if you're a fan, if you're a fan of Olivia Munn, you might want to turn the video off now cuz I might disappoint you. And I watched a few I watched a few of her videos and I looked at her Looked at her birth chart here, and man, look at this. See all these lines? This is confusion. Confusion at its best. So on the surface, though, on the surface, this is the interesting thing, because you're going to see this a lot with people, you know, particularly people on television, etc. You don't really know them. And, you know, on the surface, sun and cancer, I love sun and cancer. Sun and cancer is beautiful. She's got this fifth house Pluto, a little bit of Leo there. North node in Leo, south node in Aquarius. I love south node and north node on the Leo Aquarius axis. And she has Venus on the she has Venus on the rising. Although it's retrograde and it's in Gemini, it's still there on the rising. So on the surface, and a moon, a moon in Pisces to boot. On the surface, beautiful beautiful person seems like a beautiful personality but internally internal internal angst so let's take a look for one where she's coming from we're looking at Pluto here it's in Libra it's in the fifth she's got strong need strong deep desires to will herself through life and we see the south node there in the tenth I'm sorry, the ninth in Aquarius, but it's right there near the MC. So more this where she's coming from, this Pluto and this South Node. That she has that, you know, climbing the ladder. I came from nothing. Um, I mean, if you know her story, you know this. I came from nothing, uh, immigrant, the, the whole the whole story. And I'm not, nothing against that story by itself. I just think it's overplayed, and when we're looking at astrology, it's not the it's not always the uh, it's not always the most beautiful astrology, to be honest. And we can look here; she's got Moon in the tenth. I mean, it is in Pisces, but it's in the tenth. Moon doesn't really like to be in the tenth. Moon is the feminine, the female, the mother, and it's in this position of authority, the father. And again, that kind of goes along more with this idea of climbing the ladder. I have to get ahead because life, life as an immigrant, life as a poor person is so bad that I have to be this rich uh, celebrity. I have to be this person that makes it in life. And we see here, rising is air. The MC is air. The north node is in the third. Even though it's in Leo, it's in the third. And we also have Jupiter... Saturn and Mars in Virgo in the fourth. Mars and Saturn are making a conjunction in the fourth in Virgo. And this person has a lot of air, has a lot of Virgo, has a lot of mental distress. That's what that is, mental distress around her emotions. And it's interesting because she did have breast cancer. And I'm not saying that this is proof that this is what's really what's really going on. But you know, the breasts are ruled by cancer. And the moon. The breasts are really what distinguish and everything that goes along with uh, with them or what really distinguish or one of the distinguishing factors between a male and a fe and a female. And a person who has uh, like this can happen. I, I do think that the, we can look at the astrology. A person that has all of this distress uh, around uh, things like making it in the world, working, just stress in general that go against the female nature of being a mother, it makes perfect sense that they would have some trouble uh, just like breast cancer. So we can see that the sun there in the second, the second in Tau Taurus is a sign, second house, that has to do with the moon. Her sun is there in Cancer. And... Uh, she has Mercury retrograde, so it's like there's this. 
strong need to be a mother, strong desire to be a mother. But then there's the, then there's the Venus in Gemini on the rising retrograde. And if you know anything about Venus retrograde, oftentimes people that have Venus retrograde are very independent. They're very self-willed. They it points to Uranus, which we're going to get into. It points to Aquarius. She's coming from the South Node. And these people <coughs> typically will have trouble mating in life. They would it doesn't really go along with this family motherly dynamic with Sun and Cancer. So we see that as she did eventually become a mother and marry late in life. But not without struggle. Jupiter, Saturn, Mars in the fourth house, the house of cancer, the house of the mother. You know, could have very difficulties with the mother and the parents with this Saturn moon opposition pressure from the parents fourth house tenth house Mars Saturn pressure from the parents to be on task Virgo to do well in life uh, I, I think I saw her in an interview talking about her brothers and sisters one was a physicist one was a uh, perfect scores in the magna cum laude and college, etc. That's pressure from the parents. There's absolutely no need to do that in life. I mean, I graduated with a summa cum laude, but I did it for my own, my own will. I did it for myself. I had no pressure from my parents to do any of that. In fact, my parents could care less. They, they, my parents loved me just as I was. So, with that being said, let's take a look at Uranus. See, it's making a trine to Mercury. It's making a trine to the Moon. There's a grand trine in um, between Uranus, Mercury, and the t and uh, the Moon. But it's in the tenth, the sixth, and the second. So where is this? Where is she putting her emotional power and emotional passion? She's putting it in the work life, material things, earthly things. Second, sixth, tenth. As if that's going to solve your problems. And we see in her story, it didn't solve her problems. She still had breast cancer. She still has a lot of stress. I heard her once say in an interview that she hates yoga. She hates the cure. <laughs> she hates the cure that's actually going to give her peace. Yoga, Eastern philosophy, real philosophy. But see, here in the, in the West, we think that we think that, um, and, and I'm not not going to, I'm not completely knocking her because we, we do think that material materialism is going to give us our peace. But with that being said, here in the West, and pretty much taking over the whole world, that the way the system is is that we're forced that if we do not take care of the business aspect of life, we will suffer. So. This could have been true for her life as well. Just this feeling of if I don't take care of the business aspect of my life, then I will suffer. However, um, I don't think you need to take it as far as someone like her has taken it. Where this, you know, I'm sure she has a massive house. I'm sure she has this, you know, massive persona, etc. That is, that is kind of blowing it out of proportion. It doesn't take that much to find peace in life based on materialism. So we have Uranus here as well, squaring the MC. It's uh, making a square to the south node. So we're looking at evolutionary astrology. She really has a need to resolve this Leo in the third. And a lot of nervous energy, Uranus. A lot of nervous energy coming into life about where am I gonna where am I gonna work? How am I going to make it? How am I going to resolve this trauma? We're on a sixth house. Through the work life. She's going to do it. Because she was a news anchor. She worked in news. Third house. Leo. Putting herself out there. To me, news anchor being in the news is a very headstrong position. Uh, it's a, it's, I, I don't think I've ever... I don't think I will ever meet anyone in the news that I would say is an all-around healthy person. Not not for my taste. And uh, if anyone's watching this in the news, which I doubt they, they are, because that would be the type that would hate astrology. If you talk to her, she probably hates astrology. I mean, she said she hated yoga. I mean, come on. How do you hate yoga? How do you hate stretching and breathing exercises that will, that will make your body better? 
So, just alone, this Mars, Saturn, and Jupiter in Virgo in the fourth would need to be handled, and yoga would be the answer. With a Venus retrograde, Venus retrograde 16 degrees, squaring, squaring the Saturn, squaring the Mars. You see that Mars-Venus square that I talk about a lot? That um, really coming into life, having, I mean, have it being retrograde. It's something like that she's done before. She still is like this today. She still believes in this BS. And uh, she still believes that this individualistic, gung-ho reality is the cure, is the way to the way to heal Virgo. Like suppose when you have doctors that are standing there willing to willing and ready to uh, save your life, I suppose that can still be that can be the reality. So I'm gonna leave it there for now. So Olivia Munn, and, and to boot, her name isn't Olivia, Olivia, it's Lisa. That's her real name, Lisa Munn. Because Olivia, the name Olivia doesn't really do this chart justice. The name Lisa does. Not that all Lisas have that, but I've known a few Lisas in my life. And the poor Lisa that I'm thinking of, poor, poor Lisa. So let me know what you think down in the comments. This is a birth, a mini birth chart analysis for Lisa Olivia Munn.